back to another episode of Spellweaver Speculation. My name is Boltar, and Spellweaver Speculation is the series where I come up with new cards under the guise of speculating about stuff that might happen in Spellweaver someday. This is also the series where when we're teased or given some kind of hint about new content, then I speculate on it. But for the most part, yeah, I just speculate on new cards. This was the second most demanded um, kind of video segment aside from gameplay and deck spotlights. Uh, which was the overwhelming majority, the spotlights were over 50%, but roughly, I think it was like 38 to 40 or something like that percent of people voted for um, Spellweaver Speculation. So I thought to myself, well, let's make some another Spellweaver Speculation video. I think I could do one gameplay, one Spellweaver Speculation video a week, or maybe I'll just do two, two, do two gameplays. Anyway, today, once again, I am joined by the wonderful Danny Beagle. Say hi, Danny Beagle. Nah, he's asleep. <laughs> Um, my beagle is in the room with me again, and he was snoring really loud a few minutes ago, but it seems he's quieted down. Couldn't I couldn't wake this beagle up if I tried to. I have a, I literally have a tiny little air horn that um, I use for sporting events and such, and I, you know, he's deaf, so that doesn't even wake him up. Um, so, anyway, back to the video. The, the um, video that I'm going to be or the cards I'm going to be showing you in this video, all brought to you by Top Hat Cat, the same person who does all my, um, you know, custom artwork for my channel. Although, the thumbnails that I've been adding and this picture, you know, I did myself because that's the extent of the, you know, <laughs> that's the extent of the Photoshop editing whatnot talent that I have. So these, um, these cards come out from, or come from Top Hat Cat, a big thanks and a shout out to him. Um... But anyway, let's dive right into it. Today's theme will be board wipes, or cards that affect the entire board. Um, well, for the most part. And so, primarily the way, the reason for these cards is I've always sat down and I thought to myself, well, Dominion is Cataclysm, but if you're not playing Cataclysm, you kind of have a rather difficult time if you fall behind being swarmed. Sure, you've got Infernal Tributes, sure you have Advanced um, Zash's ability, but besides that, really you are kind of got to maintain board presence. If your opponent can kind of, you know, play a couple creatures and just kill off whatever you're summoning, and they have, like, four creatures, and you're playing, like, one or two, then you're kind of screwed, you know what I mean? It's really hard to come back in Spellweaver right now if you get overrun. And while that's a good thing, it's also a bad thing, because it kind of limits you if you want to make sure you have definite board wipes. You have to be playing Dominion. So I thought to myself... You know, Dominion, what if um, what if all the other aspects had some kind of board-wide effect? So, that's kind of what I came up with today. I came up with a rotation of cards, relatively the, uh, all the same level requirement, um, but with different mana costs based on their ability. And I just kind of wanted to like, ponder, speculate, as you were, if you will, um, what the other effects are... Um, or what the other aspects could do. So the first one is called Temporary Armnesis. Now this was the first one that popped into my mind. This is the one that, um, <clears throat> you know, first kind of came to me. Uh, it's an order card. Temporary Armnesis. Return all creatures to their owner's deck. Neither player can attack until the end of your next turn. Now what does that mean? Okay, so basically it wipes the board, but it doesn't kill anything. So, you know, keeping in, in step with the whole Armnesis theme. You know, it's a truce. It's a, um, a temporary ceasefire. And that's kind of where the second of, uh, half of the ability comes from. Return all creatures to their owner's deck. So, everything just goes back to the deck. You can draw it again. They can be played again. Whatnot. Neither player can attack until the end of your next turn. So, you play this card. Um, it's obviously, it's not an instant speed. So, you play this card on your turn. Everything is wiped. You can, maybe you play another creature. Maybe you... Um, Maybe you have a lamp in play. Even if you do, you can't. Act, you can activate the lamp, but you can't attack with it. You pass the turn over to your opponent. Your opponent can play. Your opponent can play Ramgak, um, Firebrand Goblin, and Gable and Roni, and just have a, you know, a whole bunch of Swift guys, but they can't attack. So, un and then you go it passes back to your turn. You can't attack. So may, technically, I guess you're missing out on two attack phases. But if you're playing this card, you don't really want to be attacking anyway. Also. You can attack with creatures and then play this card. Say your opponent has a whole bunch. Say your opponent has a whole bunch of moon priestesses and summoner druids in the back row. 
and you want to attack, but you want to get rid of those guys. But you're playing Order. How is Order going to get rid of the back row? Yeah, exactly. They pretty much can't. So you play the temporary armistice, they lose their back row, but they in trade they get the ability to draw and play their summoner druids again, which you know refreshes their energy so that they can use his effect again. But you buy yourself a couple or a turn at least. Your opponent can't attack for a turn. But in trade for your opponent not being able to attack you, you can't attack your opponent. So in my opinion, 5 mana 3 levels is pro maybe a little too much. Maybe it could be 4 and 3 levels. Um, every one of these is going to be double aspect and 1 generic. Originally, they were just going to be double aspect, a lot like um, Cataclysm is. But I felt some of... The, when I get into some of the other ones, their, their um, ability is pretty strong. And I just felt like 2 aspects was a little, un, uh, little under-costed. So, moving on to the next one. Toxic Fog. The name of this card is actually a shout out to a kaiju is a shout out to a kaiju card I used to play a lot. Again, me and like six other people are the only people on the internet who know what kaiju was. But anyway, all creatures get five weakness emblems. So basically, it it's like a toxic fog or a, a noxious fumes on steroids and for the entire board. Neg five, neg five to everything, and it's permanent. It lingers. It's a gas cloud. So. That's kind of the big deal on this one. It's not, you you know, it's not, oh, I'll just, um, you know, deal five, but if I can't kill it, it just stays, you know, it, if I can't kill it, like I can't kill Antriel or I can't kill um, Undead Hydra, it just doesn't do anything. No, this one's going to reduce that to a, you know, a neg one, or a, basically just a one one or maybe a two two or whatnot. I feel like five is kind of the right balance both mana wise and weakness emblems wise just because it kills pretty much everything but not everything there are some things that can survive it albeit weak um albeit they're weak when they do survive it but this is this was an entertaining um concept that i've been tinkering with and i genuinely think that corruption could very very well use some kind of mass board um minus minus effect like even if it's just like you know three mana every th um three mana one corruption um all creatures get neg one neg one you know what i mean or minus one minus one kind of like a mini zyara but in this oh beagle's awake um <laughs> if you guys hear noise in the background that's because the beagle's awake um so <clears throat> just the ability to kind of wipe away some of the board is I mean I know they've got infernal tribute but if your opponent infernal tribute unless you already have kind of a board presence is really just kind of a, a mediocre play you know what I mean it's five mana you're only killing two creatures and your opponent gets to choose what creatures they are your opponent can and your opponent pretty much just goes all right well I've got two tokens those tokens get sacrificed big whoop so toxic fog being basically one level added to that um slows it down a little bit makes it so that it's more of an investment to play you have to you either need to be playing another aspect which let's face it corruption pair is basically always paired with something and you might notice that a lot of these are control cards well they're pretty much board wipes and i feel like while control decks are very strong right now they kind of lack some not versatility what's the word i'm looking for um they like the ability to kind of be diverse. Um, we have like Wisdom Dominion and we have like Corruption Wisdom. I really can't wait to play some a, um, a control deck with Rage in it. Not like, uh, who was it? I forget exactly who it was, but there was a control deck from the early meta article that basically played Altar of Dragons and um, Red Dragon, but that was it on Rage. I think... I would really love a meta where I could play, um, like, Wisdom Dominion with just a little bit of, instead of splashing Corruption with that, um, splash Rage for, like, Fireballs and Fire Blasts and even, and just having the ability to just be like, alright, well, I'm in a control versus control matchup, I, um, throw two Dragon's Breath at my opponent and I win. That kind of thing. Anyway, I'm getting off track. <laughs> I'm getting off topic. So all these are going to be more control decks or more control oriented, even though they, um, 
even though I do have a rage card in here. Um, I've been calling for rage to get some more control cards for a while now, but that's, again, beside the point. So, I my neighbor's doing something with a chainsaw, so if you guys hear that, that's what that is. Um, anyway, next, Astral Singularity. Four mana, um, same level spread. Shock and freeze all cr enemy creatures. Originally, this was all creatures, but for four mana, it seemed a little... Um, underwhelming. God, that chainsaw is loud. Anyway, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted, but that's like literally outside my window. Um, so this one I kind of wanted, I couldn't really think of much of anything for wisdom. So this one's kind of underwhelming and I wanted to tweak it, but for the life of me, I couldn't think of anything else. So shock and freeze all enemy creatures. So it buys you a turn because it, um, the shocked creatures can't attack or block and they're frozen. So that's some potentially some sort of like board, um, clear like maybe advanced zash's power will actually be a board wipe so pair this up with a little with something and just you know maybe it will be super effective um very situational card no doubt but i feel like it's something it's kind of advanced uh darius's ability only it adds the it's, it takes away one damage and adds a freeze which means that you know it essentially reduces all their health to one outside of um, like Noxious Fumes or Plague Vermin. So putting this in combination with something like Disciple of Zash or, um, like I said, Advanced Dare, um, Zash's ability, you know, could very mu uh, be a very strong combo. And it also sets you up in a position where your opponent is very hesitant to attack. So while it doesn't necessarily board wipe, when it's comboed with certain cards, it does start to board. It does um, count basically act as a board wipe. Not only that, but you um, combo. You know, it only affects your opponent's side, so it's um, a bit more of an advantage that way. If you already have a board, you can kind of trade it away into your opponent's board, and there's really not much they can do with it or do about it. Uh, this was slightly um, inspired by. Um, Elreich's ability, the illusion token, the whole if it takes damage it dies thing. Um, just in that, just in the freeze. I mean, wisdom is pretty much the only aspect with freeze. I, I don't think anything else has any freeze effects. I don't think anything else has shock effects either. So I really couldn't think of, like I said, much of anything else to do with this card. Maybe add like draw a card. I was thinking of adding um, draw a card to it, but then I think I'd have to make it either five mana or I don't know like I said this one this one was kind of the hardest one for me to come up with I didn't really I couldn't really think of much of anything else at least nothing else that kind of is in keeping with what wisdom already has you know what I mean wisdom has shocks wisdom has freezes wisdom has energy I certainly couldn't be I certainly couldn't do like destroy everything without energy although that might have been fun I don't know <laughs> so um Again, this one's kind of my weakest card, but, uh, well, weakest idea at any rate. Not, it's not very interesting, but um, I'll let me get, you know, let me know what you guys think. Anyway, I'm moving on. This is the card that I, like, originally thought Spellweaver could use, and I still hold true to a card, to basically a card like this. Eight mana, so, yeah, it's a pretty expensive card, but the effect you're getting is worth the price, in my opinion. Destroy all creatures, artifacts, and spells. Then put all creatures, artifacts, and spells from each hero's graveyard on the bottom of that hero's deck. So, in essence, your the, the the thematic idea I had for this is, you know, fire wipes out anything. Enough fire ba burns or left lava will burns down everything. You know what I mean? It, um, lava can destroy creatures. It can destroy land. It can destroy buildings it can destroy artifacts it can destroy statues it can destroy pretty much everything so you're playing this it's got a literal complete board wipe your opponent has um lamp of fear <clears throat> gone your opponent has restless tombs <clears throat> gone it basically like melts the battlefield and covers it with lava and the lava hardens creating a new battlefield so that's kind of the mentality i had for this card I also, I mean, it is inspired. A lot of the people who played Magic the Gathering will know that there's a card very similar to this card um, in in red in Magic. And 
again, like I said, I drew inspiration from that, but I still hold true that Spellweaver could use a card like this. I think it could really use that absolute board wipe. Now, I mean, right now, if you play Cataclysm, it doesn't destroy Lampus of Fear, it doesn't destroy Restless Tombs, it doesn't destroy Path of Transcendence, it doesn't destroy um, Dark Portal. It doesn't destroy things that, after you play Cataclysm, your opponent can just generate value from anyway. You know what I mean? You play it, um, or you play Cataclysm, your opponent still has stuff on board. You're still behind. So, again, this is another... And the other reason I put it in um, in Rage is because, like I said, I want Rage to have more mid-rangey, control -y cards that make it viable to play in a control deck. That's just my desire. That's my opinion. I think Rage could be a really powerful um, control aspect. I mean, it's got some of the best removal in the game. It's got pretty much one of the only cards in the game right now that can wipe an entire row in Fire Blast. Um, I've, now you say that might be situational, but I've been playing a lot of games where I'm sitting there thinking, boy, if I had a, um, if I had a Fire Blast, his entire back row would just die. It would be gone, and I would be in such a stronger position. But because I'm, um, you know, I'm playing more of a mid-rangey control deck, it doesn't really have pl room for Rage. Rage just doesn't fit in it, so I want Rage to be more of a control mid-range aspect, and I'm glad that the game is kind of moving t more towards mid-range kind of decks. That makes me really happy, and god, that guy's going at it with the chainsaw again. <laughs> I'm sorry. I get distracted. But anyway, this card is kind of the one... I, or I mentioned this on the fan creations thread months and months ago, but it's just I really, really wanted to see a card like this in Cat in... Um, Spellweaver, and I just I love it. I love effects like this because it prevents you from overextending, even with your with all your cards. You know, just not creatures with your artifacts and such. It prevents you. Um, it keeps decks that play a lot of uh, um, uh, spells and stuff humble. It also um, helps you against mill decks, and that's why it's kind of more of a late game card because. Mill decks are going to try and nil the hell out of you when you play this. It's like, oh, well, everything except my shrines go back in my deck. You know, but it does it for both players. So maybe you even could play this in a mill deck if you've got, like, a bunch of mana. You play this, you play a um, buzzard, and all of a sudden you start milling with your massive amounts of mana. But anyway, um, I think a card like this could really, really help Spellweaver. Maybe it wouldn't even be played, but the ability to put it in a deck would be great. And I believe we only have one card left to go, and that's Call of the Weak. Three mana, three levels, destroy all creatures that cost two or less. So basically, what I, where I drew inspiration from this is basically, this is I wanted this to be a gigantic jungle death trap. Jungle death, death trap is the two mana, one level in nature, four, four, speed one, that whenever your opponent plays um, creatures that cost two or less, sacrifice... Um, uh, jungle Death Trap, destroy those creatures. Um, my original idea, and this was the original idea, it was going to be like Cyclonic Terror or something, some weird name. Um, I believe it was going to be like 5 mana, and it would bounce one row and um, landslide the other row. So maybe you chose your opponent's support row, it landslide, you know, basically puts all the creatures from that from that support row on top of your opponent's deck, and then the everything in the front row gets returned to their hand. That, I still hold true that that might be an interesting card, or maybe it's just like, you know, bounce one, deck one, but then it came to me the other night that I'm like, well, maybe I could go at it this a completely different way. Maybe I could make a gigantic jungle death trap. And it kind of does go along with the whole nature aspect of we have bigger creatures that don't, you know, that wouldn't die to this. But it would also be able to be used against elves. You know what I mean? They wouldn't be... Was, this would be a nature answer to elves. So nat elves wouldn't be able to play it to kind of get rid of blockers. You know what I mean? They, um, this would be more of a control -y card. And you could play it against um, Rage. You could play it against elves. You could play it against, like, um, control decks. Because it gets rid of zomb you know, zombies summoned up from Restless Tombs. It, some, it gets rid of um, Mesmerizing Spirits. It gets rid of a lot, basically everything in the support row. And that's another thing. 
nature doesn't have any way to deal with creatures in the support realm. So Call of the Weak would give you that ability. I can't think of a single support creature that costs more than two, you know what I mean? You've got, um, let's see, you've got like Spell Warden, this kills it. You've got Summoner Druid, this kills it. Moon Priestess, this kills it. Foundry Engineer, this kills it. Um, Disciple of Zash, this kills it. So that's one of the things that I was keeping in mind when I was designing this card. The, uh, the ability to kind of wipe away support rogue creatures and is if it's not it might just not be me but creatures um in the support row have gained much more value since moving to 25 life and basically slowing the game down because disciple of zash um gets more time to use his ability moon priestess and summoner druid get more time to ramp you so this would really help kind of keep those decks humble it would be very also it, um, I don't know if anyone else has done much testing with this, but advanced um, Nieva, that's it. Um, the advanced nature hero, the um, the whole play a dude, draw a card, play a dude, draw a card, is kind of a little ridiculous. I mean, I've played plenty of games where it's just like, well, I'm gonna play, um, I'm gonna play like eight creatures and draw eight cards uh, in combination with like Moon Priestess and Summoner Druid, and you know, basically every time I play a creature, I draw a card, so I'm not, like, losing hand advantage at all. I'm spamming the board, I'm vomiting my hand on the board, and I'm drawing cards while doing it. This card helps kind of keep that in check, and that's kind of why I, one of the reasons why I designed it this way. Um, like I said, it takes care of, it, it, this is very much an anti-aggro card, don't get me wrong, but it's, I feel like it would be an extremely useful addition to, um, to Spellweaver because there's not really any like cheap early game board white or board clear it's pretty much just fire blast I mean there's no like early game mass ability or mass damage or mass kill you know what I mean so that's pretty much the reason why I designed this card this way I'm just not I, f I really feel like the game could use at least a couple of cards that affect the board in the early game I mean let's just Let's take a look at one of the art. Well, you can argue the balance of this game, but basically, the you know, if we take a look at Hearthstone, and I hate drawing this comparison, but I mean, what else are we going to draw a comparison to? Hearthstone is the Magic: The Gathering of online card games, so you know, it's without you kind of it's kind of hard not to draw the comparison. Every class in um in Hearthstone much bas basically translates to every aspect in Spellweaver. Every class in Hearthstone has some kind of early to mid game ability to af to affect all creatures on the board. So, because of that, I feel like we could at least have a few more. I don't think every aspect needs like a cheap two, three, four mana um, affect all creatures spell. I just think they need one in every aspect. Um, that's why these. I mean, that's why this one is three mana and the rage one is eight mana. You know they don't all have to be early game. I just feel like every aspect should have one. I mean, even if we go back to Magic: The Gathering, pretty much. Even if it's just like in Magic: The Gathering, blue has returned all creatures to their owner's hand. That's not exactly a board wipe, but it affects the whole board. You know what I mean? So at any rate, I just feel like the um the. I can kind of just end the video here. I just feel like every aspect in the game could use one of those types of abilities. Now, right now we have Cataclysm. We kind of have it in um, Advanced Zash, but I feel like his power is a little too late. Um, you know, it doesn't. it's not enough bang for your buck. By the time you can activate it, if you haven't already had Ward Control, you're kind of in a losing position anyway. So... I like Advanced Zash's ability, I just feel like it's not enough. I mean, it's a good ability, I don't think it needs to be rebalanced or changed or anything. I just feel like the game could use more. So, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Um, expect a gameplay video, you know, next week or next Tuesday is when I usually post in. Hey, I'm finally getting a Friday video up. Go me. Um, so, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you know, thumbs up, comment, subscribe. I believe we're only a couple months away from the Spellweaver green light on Steam, which is going to basically revitalize and like 
bring us a huge surge in players. So, um, because a lot of people haven't even heard of Spellweaver. They don't even know it exists, but once it hits the front page of Steam, everyone's, and it's free, people that are going to be jumping on it, like, I can't even come up with a an analogy. But anyway, you guys get what I mean. So, the more you support my channel, the more my channel grows, the more people I can reach. Um, interestingly enough, and I just want to end it, end it on this because I learned something uh, about advertising or free advertising on Facebook the other day. Unless you pay money to promote your page, like I have my Bolter Spellweaver Facebook page. Um, and unless I pay money, it's like five bucks to promote it for or promote a post or something like that. Unless I pay them to do that, when I post something on Facebook, on my Facebook channel, like I say, hey, I've got a new video up, check it out. Um, if I have, say, like 50 follow or fifty people following my page, right? 50 people like my page. If I say, hey, if I post something and I haven't paid to promote it, then they only take, they take that, they only put it on like five people's um, news feeds. Like only five people will be alerted or shown that I made an update, and I think that's just bullshit. But anyway, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to get into that. I just found it kind of interesting. It is um, that revelation has kind of shown me that that the Facebook um, contest, the whole go like my Facebook and be entered for 7,500 gold, was a little stupid. So well, I've learned my lesson. I'm not going to be doing many others. I don't think I'm going to be doing any other social media related contests for 7,500 gold just because um, of the way it works. You know what I mean? I don't, I can't pay to promote my channel because I don't make any money off this channel. Um, so I've, I've kind of learned my lesson. The, um, the other, there will be contests coming up. There will be contests in the future. Um, I still have 7,500 gold keys to hand out. And because of that, I'm going to be making sure to come up with other kind of contests. I think the next contest I'm going to have is um, some form of, um, you know, op make an opening for my videos or some kind of like Photoshop contest, you know, make a, a, a like a, a banner or something for my channel, you know, something along those lines, make a profile picture for my channel or for my Facebook or something, you know, I don't know. We'll think. I'll think of something. If you have an idea for a contest, you know, feel free to put it in the comments below. I'll put a link to the poll for my channel. I'm still running that. Um, right now, I think it's like fifty percent, fifty-five percent. Um, fifty-five percent of people voted for gameplay videos. Thirty-three percent voted for um, spellweaver speculation, and the last like twelve percent. I think it's only really like one person or so. Who voted for it have voted for um like i think deck discussion or deck doctor videos so turns out deck doctor videos weren't as popular as i thought they were so i don't think we'll be con I, I think i'll only continue to do that on a um request basis someone sends me hey can you take a look at this deck maybe i'll do it i might not do gameplay with them anymore it might just be kind of a quick here's what i think you should do with a video although um i am in talk with a handful of websites that i'll be posting these videos to and maybe, and I'll also be doing articles for that. I um, I do have quite a bit of experience as a writer, so maybe I'll just do written articles for Deck Doctors from the future, but we'll see what happens with those websites. At any rate, guys, at any rate, at any rate, guys, <laughs> um, that's what, any weight is what you get when you combine at any rate with anyway. So, at any rate, guys, that's going to do it for this video. I rambled on, but I kind of had some stuff I had to announce or say. I hope you guys enjoy this video, and that's going to do it for me. May the cards rise to meet you, and bring good RNG to your enemies' enemies.